Hello and welcome again to another installment of Economics with Tully and today I'm coming to you from my porch at my home in Chester, Vermont and the subject of today's video is on the multiplier effect of spending within a community and while I intend on on looking at this phenomenon from the perspective of a new stadium or new sports venue within a community it really applies to uh, a wide range of activities such as uh, the uh, the creation of a new tourist attraction or the creation of a special event the community is hosting a fair or a festival or something like that uh, but I'm doing this video specifically for my sports economics class so I'm going to be speaking specifically in terms of the effect of a new stadium within a community now very often when there is a battle and there usually is a battle as to whether or not to build a new sports complex or a new stadium within a city inside the city on the outskirts or somewhere else um, a lot of people will suggest that there are economic pros and cons all right as they have this battle uh, people will say it uh, it creates jobs, they're spending in the community, um, and that it will, uh, will help the community. Others say that it really simply changes the nature of the community, it doesn't help the community at all. So in order to look at this from an economic perspective, we need to break down the expenditures that take place into a number of different categories. And that makes it a little easier to examine what the effect of an event or a stadium within a community will be. Specifically, we need to understand the difference between direct expenditures, indirect expenditures, and induced expenditures. And then once we have a handle on that, we can look at the multiplier effect within the community, we can look at the phenomenon of what's called leakage, and we can look at the, uh, the advent of a dual economy within a region. So those are the really the six topics I'd like to cover today in this short video. Direct expenditures in a stadium can be thought of as the expenditures that consumers make as a result of that new attraction. So when fans buy tickets to the game, when they buy hot dogs and hamburgers and uh, chicken wings and french fries and beer and soda and peanuts and popcorn, um, those are all direct expenditures. Now, uh, they don't have to be spent at the, the stadium site itself. For instance, Many of you have gone to a uh, sporting event. If you've gone to a football game, you may have stopped at the local supermarket and you picked up all sorts of goodies to have at the tailgate party in the parking lot. Those are also direct expenditures. Um, you may have had to stop for gas on the way. Uh, direct expenditures. So anything that the fan is spending money on as a result of this new institution, this new stadium, of going to an event, can be thought of as a direct expenditure within the community. And people, of course, will argue, and it is arguable, as to whether this is additional money that they are spending, or whether they're simply spending it in one place instead of another. For instance, if you go to a football game and you decide to have a tailgate party, and uh, you stop at the meat market and you pick up uh, spare ribs or hamburgers and buns and all the things you're going you're going to eat at your tailgate party that's money that you're laying out the question becomes is that money that you are spending in addition to your normal regular expenditures as you go through life or does it mean that you are merely taking the money you have and spending it in places that you ordinarily would not. So for instance, if I spend uh, $80 on uh, spare ribs and things to cook at the tailgate party, 
that may be eighty dollars less that I have to do what I would normally do with that eighty dollars so instead of going out to dinner or instead of um, oh I don't know buying something for the house uh, I spend it for the food instead so it's it's arguable whether these direct expenditures are additional expenditures in the economy that help it help the local economy grow or whether it simply moves money from expending in one place to another those are direct expenditures indirect expenditures become very very important uh, in this entire process and indirect expenditures uh, are those expenditures made by the businesses that you have purchased these goods from because they didn't snap their fingers and these things appeared when I went to the butcher shop to pick up those spare ribs for the tailgate uh, party they had to buy those spare ribs from someone else or somewhere else when I buy uh, when I buy a souvenir at a stadium they had to have that manufactured somewhere else um, so these are what we call indirect expenditures because I'm going to the stadium and I'm buying food and I'm buying a ticket and I'm, I'm buying also I'm spending a lot of money direct expenditures but though the facility had to get that from somewhere else now, in, um, indirect expenditures can have a big effect on the local economy if those, those items that that stadium obtained were also local. So, for instance, if you go to a local stadium and you buy, let's say, a local craft beer, direct, and they bought that from a brewery, in town or in the region indirect that's money that stays in the region at least for one more step if on the other hand you use that money to buy a souvenir direct but all those souvenirs were made uh, overseas uh, at, a, at a, a cheap souvenir uh, place that money has now gone so you've made your direct expenditure but it didn't have that big an impact in the local community because the indirect expenditure left the region and went somewhere else and so this is why very often when there's going to be uh, a new development a new event a new stadium uh, a new tourist attraction one of the the items that that people debating the issue often ask is well who are your suppliers where is this coming from when I buy a an eighty dollar uh, shirt that uh, has my team's name and logo on it was that sewn or made locally or is that something that came from California or China or uh, Guatemala or somewhere else because it's those indirect expenditures that can really have an effect on the local community if the stadium is buying their goods locally if they're not it's money that's leaving now let's take these two concepts together. If I would normally spend my $80 at a local restaurant and now I have spent it uh, to buy food for my tailgate party, but the person, the, the store that sells me the food gets their food from somewhere else, there actually could be a net loss in the amount of money in the community. If the restaurant bought a lot of their supplies locally, but the place I bought my spare ribs from did not, then my direct expenditures have been the same. They've simply gone from one place to another, while the indirect expenditures have left the region. On the other hand, if you have 20,000 fans coming to a stadium, and they're buying some uh, they're buying some goods and services and that stadium is using local sourcing well now you have brought a lot of people in from a very wide region 
and the indirect expenditures are significantly helping the local economy. Every situation is going to be different, and it's hard to know beforehand. It's hard to get a grasp on uh, who's buying what from what suppliers. So it works both ways. Third, we have what we call induced expenditures. Induced expenditures are the, is the spending that takes place as a result of the salaries being paid to the people who work at the stadium. So we have a new sports complex or a new stadium that goes up and they hire all sorts of people. They hire people to sell the food, they hire people to sell the tickets, they hire maintenance, um, they hire customer service people, they hire back office people. They're paying these people partially with the money that the fans are spending. Now, if I work, uh, I, I work in the accounting office, I work in the back office, I maintenance and I, I help clean the place, I draw a salary. I will now be spending that money in the local economy. This is one of the, the strongest, um, this could be one of the strongest effects of a new stadium complex in the economy. Because those induced expenses aren't necessarily related to the product being sold. Uh, if I'm uh, maintenance or accounting or ticket sales and I get paid, I may well use my money to, uh, to buy some paint, to put a new coat of paint on my house. Now that has nothing to do with sports per se, or to the event per se, but it's additional spending that takes place in the economy as a result of my being able to be hired and have an income in that economy. And that is, uh, that's spread throughout the stores uh, in, a, uh, in a region. So it, it's kind of hard to, um, kind of hard to get a handle on because when someone goes to the store and buys a can of paint or someone buys a piece of artwork to put on their wall, uh, we generally don't say, and where do you work and where'd your paycheck come from? So the induced expenditures as a result of the, the additional income tends to be diffused throughout the economy. It's a little harder to get a handle on. So now you have these three different types of expenditures that take place as a result of an event or stadium. Direct, indirect, induced. Now, if the money leaves the region, that's called leakage. So if the stadium gets all of its souvenirs from overseas, that's money that has left the local economy. That's called leakage. Um, if I, as an employee, uh, get paid, but then I buy everything on the internet and it comes from other places in the world, that's leakage from the local economy. It's not money that stays in the economy multiplying over and over. And that brings us to the fifth term, the multiplier effect. The multiplier effect is the, is the idea that when you spend money someplace, it does, to some degree, multiply throughout the region and the economy. So, uh, I bought my spare ribs for my tailgate party. The butcher actually used a locally a local farm to get those ribs from, locally sourced uh, pigs, um, so that money went to that local farmer. The local farmer uh, then actually uses that money to purchase supplies that he needs for his farm at a local uh, community feed store. The commu local community feed store uses uh, their money to hire local carpenters to fix a leak in their roof. You can see how one expenditure has the ability to multiply over and over and over and over, and that's the multiplier effect. Uh, the more that that money can be kept locally, the greater the multiplier effect, the greater an economic impact that the stadium or the event or um, the tourist attraction actually has 
on the local economy. The more leakage there is, the more that people get their, um, their, their material from outside the region, the less of an impact it has. Now, I can remember a few years ago seeing one study that was done on the city of New Bedford, which is a, a major, uh, was a major whaling port for over a hundred years and is still a big uh, fishing port in New England. Uh, they had a, a whaling festival in the city. And they wondered just, you know, how much of an effect is this actually having on the local economy? And so one of the things they were able to do was uh, they, the, the, with the help of the state, they tracked the sales tax collected on, uh, on retail sales to see how much additional spending was taking place in the city of New Bedford during the time that the festival took place. And so the amount of sales tax being paid is a real good indication of the amount of expenditures taking place there. And using that and some other, some other algorithms and some other math and some other statistics, what they were able to, determine, able to determine was that the multiplier effect was between 2.4 and 2.5, meaning that for every $1 spent, that dollar was actually spent 2.4 or 2.5 times throughout the period of the festival. And so that would, that would indicate a, uh, a fairly good multiplier effect within the region as a result of, uh, of what's going on. So now on top of that, we have the possibility of what's called a dual economy. And dual economies are, uh, can be great for those who are involved uh, in the, the money-making side and not so hot for those who are not on that side. Many, many Caribbean islands see this as a regular structural problem they have. Uh, they get tourists who come in to the island. Those tourists spend a lot of money on uh, duty-free goods and goods that have been imported from Europe, so you have a lot of leakage. Um, and what happens is many of the local businesses try to get in on that. And so what they do is they begin creating goods and services and products that are geared towards the tourists who come with a lot of money. It kind of makes sense. If uh, you have a choice of selling food or selling goods or selling products to, the, to local people who are uh, generally low income versus using your resources in your store to sell goods to tourists who will pay you a lot more money, chances are you're going to try and grab that tourist dollar. Well, the result is that fewer and fewer businesses are actually making goods for the locals. And the goods that are being made can't be afforded by many of the locals. I'll give you a, another local example of this. Uh, for uh, a number of years, I lived on Martha's Vineyard. A uh, big tourist island off the coast of Cape Cod. And in the summer, everyone ramped up to sell goods to tourists. And all summer long, it's real easy to find you know, hundreds, thousands of t-shirts, of souvenirs, of things that tourists seek to buy when they go to a tourist location. However, if you're one of the 20,000 year-round residents who lived on Martha's Vineyard, you could buy t-shirts and you could buy ashtrays and you could buy all sorts of little, you know, seagulls on rocks that say souvenir of Martha's Vineyard, but you couldn't find a single baby crib or baby car seat on the island for sale. And that's because a dual economy had developed where most of the money coming in and being made is being turned around to serve that tourist rather than the people who are local and you know need basic uh, basic goods and the same can happen in a stadium if all of the businesses in a region or in an area revamp themselves retool themselves so that what they're really doing is serving fans serving uh, the person coming for the game uh, 
they may cease offering the goods and services that are that are just boring uh, to fans. Most fans don't stop in at a hardware store, and yet most local people need the goods that are produced in a hardware store. So now you have the problem of you've got a, a certain geographic area and you're losing your hardware stores because it's easier to sell uh, things that the fans going to the game might want. Um, so it is a very complex, complicated issue. There are many, many examples of stadiums that have had a, a huge pop, um, positive impact in the areas where they are. And those tend to be the stadiums where there's a large multiplier effect, there's little leakage, and a dual economy has not developed. On the other hand, there's, there are many examples of stadiums that have done the exact opposite, that um, where the, um, the induced expenditures don't exist because they buy all their uh, material and goods from away where the multiplier effect is very low. Uh, it might be perhaps built out in uh, away from a city or away from downtown so that all the businesses that spring up there are now servicing the stadium and not servicing the locals who live on the outskirts of town because that's where the money is to be made. It cuts both ways and it's complicated. So as you, uh, I strongly recommend uh, if you're in my course, I require you to do this, if you're just watching this video because you find it interesting. Um, read up on the, the creation of stadiums around the nation. There's always new stadiums going up. And you'll see some of them have had this, this very positive impact and have become a real part of the local community. And others just seem to be islands of big money making that don't impact the community at all, and in fact, may have had a negative impact overall. This is Tom Simmons giving you a very brief overview uh, on the impact of events, stadiums, uh, on, uh, on local communities, and uh, I look forward to our next chat together.